this video, we're gonna show you the three-step soulmate attraction process, and we're gonna show you exactly what you can do to attract your soulmate into your life. I'm with Victor Odo, and we're gonna get into it right now. Welcome back to another video. My name's Aaron, and I help people expand their consciousness, and this is Victor Odo. I say this in every one collab we do. He will help you navigate through your Spiritual like, like awakening you process. I'll let you to finish it for some reason. As well as attract your soulmate. Yes. Those, those are my two specialties. <laughs> Especially today more than ever because today's video <clears throat> is on how to attract your soulmate. So many people ask and they say, what can I do to attract my soulmate, my twin flame relationship, or, which are all different facets of understanding relationships that we may find in our own lives. And part of the process of spiritual awakening is coming to a process of knowing yourself more, which could mean a lot of times redefining and understanding deep parts of relationships you may have had with many people. So we were uh, doing a podcast episode last night and we realized that there's, a, there's this process that Victor used actually to attract his soulmate. And then also we wanna clarify soulmates as well because we believe that we're soulmates. <laughs> <laughs> So he thinks he's my soulmate. I, I'm I don't know. He's like, he's like, I don't know. But um, but yeah, we uh, we made a podcast episode. And it was kind of funny. We we're kind of joking around about it. But the idea is, a lot of people think that soulmates are just romantic relationships. When a lot of times your soulmate may be your mom, may be someone in your family, or uh, a non-romantic relationship. How do you? What do you, would you define as soulmate? I agree. I feel like as we were saying uh, yesterday, Aaron. I believe that we travel through lifetimes, travel through different yeah. incarnations as a group. I mean, wouldn't that be fun? We're like we're social creatures. Maybe we're social spirits, but it does mm -hmm. seem that we come in not alone with with friends, with family, and because we are infinite and eternal beings, I think sometimes we swap around roles. Yeah. Like. Like uh, I right now, my, my wife, Patty, she's like my, my soulmate, my romantic soulmate, but I could have very well been her father in other lifetimes. She could have been my brother in other lifetimes, but regardless, we have a lot yeah. of soulmates and um, they can serve different purposes in our lives. So I think that is uh, hopeful because I know a lot of people will, uh, they'll, they'll feel they need to find their, their one soulmate, but you got yeah. a lot of options. Yeah. Yeah, and it, it puts a different facet on it as well. Like uh, we were talking about it last night in the, the episode that we were doing. We were talking about how in our like our relationship is that we're best friends. Uh, we also do a lot of business. We talk and we help each other out with what we do for a living. Our passions are very much aligned. But we feel like we have like a brotherly connection. Like in past lives as well, we know and can feel that we were brothers. And then there's also past lives where I feel like we were connected in a way where it could have been more of a, an older, like a mom or it's, it's always funny to, to, to the ego to say shit <laughs> yeah. like that, you know what I mean? But the idea is like we could have been a dad and, and son or we could have had these different roles switched around. And, um, and it makes it a little bit more interesting to understand. I know that my, uh, my mom and my brother Alex, they have very much like my brother is kind of like acts like her dad sometimes in, in many ways. He's very wise. He's got like this wise energy and you, know, you can kind of tell in the dynamic between them that he really takes care of her in a certain way and you can tell that there's that kind of connection there. So the reason that we're sharing all this though is we want to kind of break apart the beliefs that soulmates only means romantic because your soulmate may be someone in your family. It may be one of your best friends and it seems like synchronicity that you met up with someone. And uh, what I thought we would do now is share a little bit about because uh, we're going to share with you this three-step process that I believe will work if you apply it. It's what Victor uses. It's what I use. This will also help you. <laughs> you good? That, that thing came back, yeah. Oh, yeah. That There's bug. this huge <laughs> bug that's like this big, and it was just like hovering right yeah. here. We're like, whoa. Victor's like, <sighs> blew it away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, this three-step process, because this will also help you to attract your high-vibe tribe or people that you may you know, know your whole entire life and have a deep connection with. So why don't you share a little bit about you're finding a romantic soulmate in your life because I think that's what a lot of people want to understand is maybe see hope for them doing the same type of thing. And uh, I know that you've definitely met your soulmate in your life pet being Patty, so. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so I've been married for over 10 years with my, my soulmate for about 14 years. And uh, it happened in a very sort of magical and synchronistic way. But as I was talking to Aaron uh, yesterday, I believe I sort of like not knowingly uh, applied his three-step process, which I'm not gonna reveal just exactly right now. I'll let you get into it. But essentially it involved a lot of inner work, 
and mm-hmm. coming to love myself. I was, a, I was a, a drug addict a long time ago, right out of high school. And uh, I had finally gotten clean after trying, you know, multiple times. And I found myself at a pretty young age, 19 years old, doing a lot of inner work. I had a therapist. I was waking up every day and meditating. And I had all these different little affirmation books. And I was going to meetings. I was like uh, doing like like shadow work with my AA buddies and stuff. And I was doing a lot of work and I went through quite a, 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 an inner transformation where I went within a couple years from someone who was like pretty much suicidal, really down and out big time to someone who really loved themselves, mm-hmm. held my, started to hold my head up high and feel more worthy. I had just more of a confidence, more of a worthiness. And at that point I began to start sort of like, like expect my soulmate to come. Like, you know, I've done a lot of work. Mm -hmm. I am lonely. I do want this, but it's not coming from any longer a needy place. Like I need it. It's more like it's time. And I was telling Aaron, I said, I put out this prayer to the universe (laughs) in in sort of a literal way. I had, I like sat outside. I like, uh, I went to my big window in my parents' house and I like kneeled down. I was like, God, and I, I sort of prayed to, to meet my soulmate. And it worked. A week later, I swear to you, um, it just happened very synchronistically where my wife happened to come and sit right in front of me at this particular AA table amongst hundreds of people. She, there was one spot left and she was late. We sat right across from each other and we like, we, we just had this connection, man. And, uh, but I had to kind of step outside of my comfort zone and, and you know, uh, talk to her and, and whatnot, sort of initiate and get the ball rolling. But you know, the rest is history, but it came from a lot of self-love and, and inner mm-hmm. work. Um, intention and then action. So that, yeah. and, but, but ever since it's been, uh, it's been awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And I, lo- I love that story cause it shows, it shows there's, there's the, the three step process I'm going to share was kind of, I thought about last night after he shared this and after I realized that I did the same exact thing when it came to even meeting people in my life, whether it be that of romantic or that of somebody like Victor, who is like a you know non-romantic uh, connection, where it's like this deep soul brother connection type thing, and we'll go ahead and share with you the three-step process that you can apply now. And the first one is something that I think, if you make this your primary focus, it makes the process so much easier. And understand this: you always find someone in life that is a reflection of where you currently are. And if this is what I realized when I was in prior relationships in my past. Whenever I was doing a job I wasn't passionate about, like many of you may know, I used to work at Barney's New York in women's shoes, and uh, or even before that in Nordstrom, just, I was selling women's shoes, I wasn't passionate about it, but I was doing it, it was how I made money. I realized that I always attracted a girlfriend that also was working a nine to five job that they weren't passionate about. So it was like this kind of one-on-one reflection I always noticed, but then what happened is I started doing my passion, I started doing what I love, and then I started to attract people into my life, and. You know, I'm with someone now that has that, that passion for what they do. So it's, it's very interesting that that dynamic is, is something that I noticed in that reflection. I remember there was someone on a recent Q&A I was doing, and they were like, you know, I, I met this, I had this soulmate connection with somebody, and then it didn't work out, um, and now I feel really needy about it, and I don't know what to do. And the thing is, is uh, we'll talk a little bit about that, too, as we're soulmates, because sometimes people think that soulmate connection means that, like, it has to be forever not understanding, you know. Yes. But I was telling this person, like, the reason you found somebody that is deeper than any other connection that you've ever had in your life is because you've gone deeper within yourself. And because you've gone so deep within yourself, you now have a reflection of somebody that also is at their core. So it's a reflection, something to know that there could be even a deeper connection out there if you haven't found it. So it's, it's this understanding and this recognition that you always get in life a reflection of where you are and the depthness that you've gone within yourself because you're already whole and complete. Now the key to the first step to this process is getting to your core vibration because if you're working a nine to five job that you hate, you might find that you find somebody else that also is working a nine to five job they hate. Doesn't mean that you can't find and that can't be the one, but just in general, get to your core vibration because your core vibration is going to, in a way, put out a frequency that then allows the other person that's in their core vibration to then find you. But if you're not at your core vibration, you're not putting out that frequency that then lets somebody else to, um, to find you in a way or for, to, for you to find them. So it's almost like a resonance thing, but you have to be vibrating at that frequency. So this could mean doing your passion. This could mean um, you really doing the self-love, the self-love work, uh, uh, work, because if you don't feel love within yourself, what happens is you put that energy out and then other people pick up on that subconsciously and you become more lovable the more that you love yourself. So it has to do with this, 
this getting to your core vibration. And for me, that was like the more that I know both of us have been on this self, you know, this self ascension journey and doing what we loved is the more we find because now we have many friends that do what we do. And it's like, it's a, it's a compounded thing. So is there anything else you want to add about? Yeah, for sure. I think you said a lot there. I think it's, it's about like, like Aaron said, it's about finding your core vibration, really finding yourself, going deep and really discovering who you are. But not only that, it's also about expressing that because sometimes people yeah. know who they are, but they're afraid to express it. Yeah. But then if you're not really, if you're not letting your guard down in life, then you're really not, you're not really, like he said, offering the ideal frequency out there. You're, you're, you're putting on this like mask mm -hmm. and then you're going to attract other people with that sort of false self. So it's yeah. kind of a, 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 it's kind of both of those things, but at the same time with also what you were saying, it, uh, it can play out in so many ways. Like my wife and I, we happened to meet and at that time we were like spitting images of each other. She literally was a recovering addict of about a year and we had like a very, very similar past. But uh, for us, it just so happened to where we started to grow together. So we've been together for a long time now and it seems to be continuing that way. But we, because we have so many soulmates, sometimes we'll attract a soulmate for over where we're currently at, but then we're, we're, we continue mm. to outgrow them. And then it's like, oh my goodness, I don't want to let go. It's my you only one. You want to talk about that? You talked about the story last night and I have like similar experience yeah. with that with your, with your friend. Yeah, I had, a, I had a real close friend, my friend Derek, and we were like, we were like blood brothers. It was like, even when I was a little kid, I could tell we were synchronistically always doing the same things. We always w had the same jobs. When I, w I got clean from drugs, I went to this place in Florida and he came down a week later and we just had the same job when we were there. And we were just like attached at the hip. We, were, we would always bicker and stuff because we were so close. Um, and there was a, a real brotherly love that I still feel for him, but it got to a point where I started to outgrow him and not in this condescending way, but I just started to, to, mm -hmm. to change sort of quickly. And, and over the years, it became where there was a huge vibrational clash where it became very evident that who I was now presently or becoming was just not who I used to be, but my friend Derek was in a sense still the same way. And I could just tell he didn't treat me with the same level of respect he, he, or, or courtesy or and he was just really not as good of a friend to me. And I was in a sense putting up with his drama, putting up with his, yeah. his abuse in a sense. It's just, it was un, a very unbalanced relationship, but I was afraid to let go because yeah. we had all this time we put in. The story, And, and yeah. I had the love, the love was real, but it was like at some point I realized I'm no longer, I'm, I'm almost choosing to, to take on this abuse because he's evidently not changing. Yeah. But it was very hard to let go, but sorry. That's all good. Um, but then eventually I did. I just it got to a point where I had to let go and I let go. And then for a while I was lonely. I was like, man, yeah. I mean, should I go back? But, but I don't want to go back because it was not, it was kind of a messy relationship. Yeah. I knew intuitively I shouldn't. So I just let it go and I was lonely for a little while there. But then because I stopped, I, I almost like by holding on to that relationship was like holding on to my old self. Yeah. And once I let go of both of those, I, fr I, I was like, okay, this is who I am, universe. And yep. it took some time, but then I, I met Aaron and, and many, both Aaron and I have a ton of soulmate friends now that are yeah. just amazing. Yeah, and part so, of that, yeah, yeah and it's funny because his story, like what he just shared with you, this same exact thing happened to me. And there was a level of comfortability, but there's a level of knowing that it's like, okay, in order to continue to grow, I have to just kind of do my own thing and focus on my own growth. And it was lonely for a while. But then Victor and I ended up meeting up synchronistically online. We reached out to each other via email when he was living in Michigan or moving to San Diego. And then we ended up, uh, yeah, he ended up coming here. And then it just worked out to where now, uh, you know, we, he moved to Vegas and we, we live in Vegas and it's just, it's really cool. So. Um, but there was a level of trust and a level of letting go. The reason I wanted to say that is with your core vibration, there's certain parts that when you let go, you then can allow something new in. So if you find that friends are draining your energy, if you find that you're in a relationship, an abusive relationship or some type of relationship where the energy dynamic is off, you can try to work with it, but you can also go and give that yourself that love within and see what happens, you know? But um, don't be afraid to let go of what is keeping your vibration and keeping you in certain states. Man, that thing is huge. Yes, I know. <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, yes, yeah, so now the second step is that of intention, setting mm -hmm. the intention. So you do the inner work, you're in your passion, you're doing what you love, then you set the intention. You say, I intend, you'd be like Victor, the, <laughs> I really, I'm ready. And, and it, was a, it was kind of the same thing for me, even when it was just from, uh, even when it was just like Victor, I remember I was like, oh man, it'd be so cool to have somebody that, would, that I could vibe with at the same level of where I'm making content and into the same type of stuff because I felt like, 
I didn't have anyone to really relate to when it comes to the spiritual awakening information. I remember you and I both were are really into Bashar and it was like, we're like, whoa, yeah. someone else is really into Bashar. We had so much to talk about, you know? So uh, intention, set the intention, set the intention to meet someone, set the intention to um, have that be brought into your life, set the intention and put out that the intention is like the, the, the focus of that energy. And some people aren't actually intending for it. They're just saying it's not here. And you know, I make videos sometimes talking about the vibration of wanting and the vibration of having are different. So you can say, I want a, a relationship. I want a soulmate. I want a soulmate. I want a soulmate. That says I don't currently have a soulmate. That's not as powerful as an intention. Intention is more like I'm ready. Uh, you're putting yourself in the vibration of knowing it's possible. It's a different energy source. So uh, that version for you was you setting the intention and saying, I'm ready. And, and you found out later on as well. I know we talked about this in the podcast. I'll link the podcast down below as well because it was like 30 something minutes. And also just a little precursor now, we're gonna be doing, we're doing a video on Victor's channel for signs that you can find your soulmate. And that's gonna be really cool. I already know kind of what we're gonna be talking about and some stuff that we've never shared. So that's gonna be linked below as well. Uh, so make sure you check out that and you check out Victor's channel as well. But uh, in general, Patty did the same thing, right? She did, yeah. With the intention, you found out later. Yeah, I found out later after after talking for a while that my wife did essentially the same thing. At the, when I met her, she actually had a boyfriend that she was kind of settling for. He was a nice guy, not as cool as this guy right here. <laughs> um, but she's like, she like knew intuitively that this is not her forever person, and she sort of did the exact same thing. Looked out her window, I swear to you, and so it was like God. At the time, we were both really into religion and stuff because we yeah. were going to AA. Um, so she had the same prayer, like God, I really want to meet my forever soulmate. Um, but uh, I think I think uh, intention is power is very very important, and a lot of times we unconsciously put out the like wrong intentions. Mm -hmm. Like I need my soulmate, my other half. Yeah, that's like then you're, you're attracting a, that same. It's more, almost like the energy behind the intention you attract. So it's almost like like with Aaron, it's important. Me and Patty both did this unknowingly, but we we're like we're ready for our soulmate. Yeah. We we've done the work, and it's time. Mm -hmm. Let, let's let's do this. I, I deserve it. So that's, uh, and <laughs> then it happened very synchronistically very shortly after that for us. Yeah, I think if more people set intentions, they can have similar experiences where they start to move in that direction at least. Yes, real quick, at the very least what will happen is you'll start to, yes, be, become aware and attract all the different things you need, whether it's a, a learning lesson or a healing or a little temporary relationship, you'll get that ball rolling yeah. by setting that intention and you're, like you'll be that. on the fast track regardless of how it happens to play out for you. Yeah, whether it's immediately you meet them a week later or whether it's you meet someone else that then leads you to you having this deeper connection that you thought possible. So yeah. yeah, it's amazing. Now the third thing was something that really resonates with me as well because of the kind of like the spiritual community idea of what it means to be spiritual and attract. Sometimes we think of attract and we think it's all about thinking, it's all about thinking. But sometimes, many times, it is necessary to put yourself in the vibration and to take action and to make the move, to make the move. So for you, that was you making the move and what was it? It was you guys, when, I like that story that you shared yeah. on the podcast. Yeah, so I, I could tell, even though this was well before my spiritual awakening, that something was going on. I was like, why is this really beautiful woman like super into me? I could just tell. And I just felt this connection with her. And I could tell she felt it with me, even though we had just like sat across the room from each other. Um, but I found myself after the meeting ended, everyone goes outside and smokes cigarettes. And I wasn't even smoking at the time. And I saw her sitting over there, kind of hanging out with her friends. And I was like, I knew... I, it was, I, I knew I had a chance there. I, I had enough of an intuition to know this woman, I could maybe date or something. And I, mm -hmm. I was like, this could be the one. Um, but it didn't just happen. She didn't just come up to me and yeah. say, hey, I'm your soulmate, what up? It was more like, I had to get kind of clever. I, and, I was, and I was very nervous, because mm -hmm. I, I thought she was like well, out of my league in a sense. So I walked up to her, and I like came up with some bullshit in my mind. I was like, oh, hey, hey, could I bump a smoke? I'm, I lost my, I left my pack in the car. I made up something. I didn't even smoke at the time. And she's like, sure. And then I was like, huh, OK. <laughs> and then we were talking, and I was like, hey, would you want to go out and get some coffee or something? And she was like, with just you? And I was like, 
she, or she, I forgot what I said, but she's like, I'll get all my friends. I was like, oh God. So I had to like, I had to like hustle there and fina- we, we went out with all of her friends cause she had a boyfriend, she felt bad. And I had to like hustle oh, my yeah, way to like sit by her. But it took some hustle, some like creativity and definitely some pushing outside of yeah. my own nerves. Yeah. And at the end of the night, I didn't even tell you this, I even made up this story so I could drive her home. I said, hey, you know what? I found out where she lived. Like I'm going that way after this meet, after this oh, wow. coffee. Maybe I'll give you a ride. And I was, it was lying. I don't even live anywhere near where she lived. Oh damn. And she's like, well, okay. Yeah. So I drove her home and we talked. We connected. My favorite song came on the radio. It was like magic. But yeah. I, it was like, yeah, fate sort of handed me this situation. Yeah, but but I had to like something. meet it halfway. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's powerful to and it, and it's powerful to know that it's there for you. But you must move into it, and that can that means taking the action. Now, what could this mean for you? Set up situations that put you in opportunities for that. So, for example, you want to meet more spiritual people that vibe with you. Go to yoga class, go to meditation groups, get on, you know, find different people, find where these people are and then go. Doesn't mean you're desperately looking for them, but just understand that you must do something in order to put yourself in that vibration of where the proximity of where a lot of these people are. If he would have just looked and be like, oh, that's a great idea. Maybe something will happen in the future. Then who knows what kind of time track that would have been on. Yeah. And if it, and how that would have played out differently. But it's three simple steps. And it's finding your core vibration, which means doing what you're passionate about, starting to find out what that is. You don't know what that is, set the intention to find out what that is. Intention is extraordinarily powerful. Part of that is also letting go, letting go of the old stories, letting go of the, uh, you may have stories to also that it's hard to attract your relation, uh, a soulmate, a story that it doesn't happen. You always attract a certain type of guy, a certain type of girl. Drop that story, see it for what it is and get to your core vibration. And then secondly, let set the intention just like Victor did set the intention set the intention to meet more high vibe people set the intention to meet soulmates set that intention and then see what comes in your direction see if you get something else that makes you learn something whatever it is and then thirdly take action put yourself in uncomfortable positions you know Dr. Joe Dispenza says you put yourself in the unknown that's where miracles happen no miracles happen in the known because in the known you think certain thoughts you feel certain emotions you take certain actions you get the same results that you've always gotten of what those are. If you get into the unknown, that's where magic can happen. Victor had to step into the unknown. He had to do things that were a little bit uncomfortable. He had to get a little bit clever with ways that he could put himself in a situation to be around somebody that he knew he had a deep connection with. So these three-step process, I think you can apply, and I think that it will help you with that process. Anything else you wanna add? You shared I, I, a lot of really I, good stuff. I think so. you summed it up beautifully. Yeah, no, I, I just, I concur with what Aaron said. That's been my experience, and I think what if you apply what he said, it will work for you. We're living in a time where it is possible to meet mm-hmm. your romantic soulmate and, and also a bunch of high vibe friends, but it, uh, we have to sort of step into our power and do a little bit of the work. But it's, it's also, it's, it's not even a bad thing to do. The, the, the work leads to more self growth, a better yep. life, and the, the, the new relationships are also the kind of reflection of the new person you blossom into. So it's a beautiful process all around. Yeah, it is, yeah. And if you guys haven't seen it already, there's gonna be a video link right below, which is the video that Victor and I are gonna make here in just two, two to three minutes right after this video. We're gonna make a video on five signs that you have met a soulmate in your life and soulmate relationships. And uh, we're gonna share some information that we haven't shared before. Also check out Victor's channel. He makes amazing YouTube videos. If you haven't checked him out already, I'm sure a lot of you have, but if not, He'll link, be linked below. It's uh, content similar in the same type of niche, spiritual awakening, ascension, raising your vibration, transformation, all of that. So definitely follow Victor as well. I want to say thank you, Victor, for coming on my channel. You're welcome. And, and thank uh, you, everyone. Thank you. And we'll talk to you guys later. Peace, much love, and namaste.